we're going to talk about um, various kinds of uh, making models. Now, um, there's actually two sections in um, Chapter 2 that have to do with uh, making models and, and working word problems, and we're only going to do the first one. We're going to do Chapter or Section 2.2. 2.3 has some um, uh, more complicated word problems like mixture problems and, and work rate problems and things like that, and we aren't really going to emphasize this. The, the inclination here is that we're going to move to calculus type of problems, um, uh, prepare you for that rather than uh, you know, just general um, uh, algebraic type problems. So uh, we're going to focus just on these um, uh, type of problems, problems that deal with percent, ratios, markup, and discount. Okay, so we'll start with percents. Now, percent comes from a word, um, it, it's a contraction actually, um, uh, per century. Uh, you know what a, uh, a century is. We usually think of that as a hundred years. But in more general, century means a hundred. Like, um, you all know what I mean when I say um, well, it costs a C-note, right? You talk about a C-note as being um, a $100 bill. And so if you look at the word cent as a contraction of century and per cent, that means per hundred. And that's what we're going to talk about in terms of uh, percent. It's simply a matter of a rate that's per uh, 100 uh, units, whatever you're talking about. So we normally talk about percentages in terms of changes and proportions and things of that. So if we have two numbers, one that goes from 80 to 100, the other one going from 100 to 80, in, per, in terms of percentage, what's the change? Is it the same change or do we have a different percentage change? Okay, so let's look at, um, uh, let's look at some definitions here. Okay, so if we go from 80 to, um, 80 to 100, we're going up 20. And so 80 is where we start from. And so if we're adding 20 to it, that means that um, the ratio or the amount that we're going up is 20 over 80 or one-fourth. Now, we represent um, percentages as um, uh, per 100. So we put it in a decimal form. So one-fourth is 0.25 in decimal form. Um, 0.25 times 100, since we're, um, we're looking at per 100, would be 25%. Okay, so it's 25 per 100. How fast is 80 going up? Well, it's going up 25 units per 100 units. Okay, even though 80 is less than 100, we're, we're still looking at it as, um, as a percentage. So it's, it's gone up by a fourth. Now, if we look at the other... Um, uh, if we look at the other case... We're going to go 100, and we're going to go down 20. So now our base number, the number that we're starting with, is 100. And so we have 20 over 100, which is 1 fifth, or 0.2. And if we multiply that by 100, we get 20%. So even though the two numbers are the same, 80 to 100 and 100 to 80, we're, we're having a 25% increase going from 80 and we're having a 20% decrease going from 100 to 80, okay? So the difference there is that we have a different base number. And so percentages, uh, a, a lot of working with percentages is understanding what is the basis or what's the base number, where are we starting from uh, to get our percentages. And since we're starting from a different point, either 80 or 100, even though we're changing 20, it's a different proportion to, to its base number. Okay, so that's the thing to remember. Percent is calculated with respect to a base number. Okay, so when we look at the general model for problems um, involving percents, you can make a, a kind of a, a diagram or a statement that the compared number is the percent times the base number. So, you know, I've already emphasized this base number um, word, so let's call the number that we end up with the compared number, okay? So when we go from 80 to, to, to 100, 80 is our base, 100 is the number that we're comparing it to, and so the percentage is the number that you multiply the base to get to the, um, to the compared number. 
Okay, so 20 is 25% of 80, and you see here where the 20, we would call this the base number, this is the percent, um, and 80. Now remember those key words. Um, of is oftentimes um, a word that, that um, means multiplication, and is is often the word used for the equality, and so my, my diagram up here where I have the equals and the times translates right into that into that statement, 20 is 25 percent of 80. Another way to put it, or another example, is just 125 is 50 percent of 250. Okay, so you figure this out. Okay, what number is 8 percent of 60? What do you think? Anybody? Nobody? Anybody? Okay, well let's think let's think in terms of what it should be approximately. Yes. Can I guess? Tell me. Four point eight. Four point eight is right. Okay, so let let's look at this, you know, first from an estimate standpoint and then do it numerically. Okay, one of the things I want you to develop is kind of a number sense. Like when you get two numbers and you do a computation on them, are you going to get approximately the right number? So, you know, 8% is a little less than 10%, and 10% is really easy to work with. So what's 10% of 60? Well, that's 6. And so we're going to expect a number that's slightly less than 6. And we know <laughs> The 8%, the 8 has to multiply the 6, right? And so 8 times 6 is 48. Well, it's not 48. It should be a number slightly less than 6, so it's 4.8, okay? So it, it's always helpful, I think, to, to look at a number and, and make an estimate to say, okay, what's the rough size of the number I'm looking for? Then do a computation, and then that'll tell you exactly what the value of the number is, and you can stick the decimal where... Um, where it makes sense, and in this case it's 4.8. Now you could go the long way and, and multiply 60 times 0 .08 and count up your decimals and things like that and you'll get exactly the, the same answer, but it's just a little bit more, uh, a little bit quicker, and it's also a little, I think a little bit more reliable to um, first set out what your expected number is uh, before you actually do the um, multiplication. Okay, so we got uh, 0 .08 times 60 is 4.8. Okay, 42 is what percent of 70? Here's one. What do you think? How would you do that? Yes? 42 over 70. 42 over 70, and what do you get? 21 over 35. Okay, so when we're looking at a percent, we need a decimal number now, right? Okay. You started out right. You had... Um, If we set up our equation, we have 42 equals um, some percentage, and I'll just put P for percent, um, times 70. And so we have 42 divided by 70 equals our percentage. Now, notice that 42 is divisible by 7, so that's going to be 6 uh, times 7, and then 70 is 7 times 10. The 7s cancel, and we have 6 tenths, which then is what? in percentage? 60 percent. Okay, and so you can do it the other way around too and you say, okay, if this is 60 percent, so when you have 60 percent of something that's a little bit more than half, a little bit more than half of 70, well half of 70 is 35, so you're going to expect a number just a little bit bigger than, than 35. <coughs> so you multiply 7 times 6 and you get 42, and the number 42 is, is just a little bit bigger than 35, so that checks out.
Okay? Yes. Yeah, what I did was I factored. I, I, um, factoring? Okay, so that, that's something you should learn how to do. Stop by my office if you, don't, if you don't get it right away. But what you do when you factor something is you take, um, you divide it successively by prime numbers. And you know the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, uh, 11, and 13. And you generally don't need to go much beyond that. You keep on dividing by 2 until you can't anymore. So it's divided by 2. We get 21. Now, we can't divide that by 2, but we can divide it by 3, and we get 7. So this is 2 times 3 times 7. So if I'm looking at 42, is 2 times 3 times 7. Now, when I have 6, um, what's that, 70, I do the same thing. Divide it by 2, and we get 35. Can't divide it by 2 anymore. Doesn't divide by 3, but it does divide by the next prime number, 5. And so we get uh, 5 divided by 35 is 7. And so then this is 2 times 5 times 7, 2 times 5 times 7. And so the 2's cancel out, the 7's cancel out, and you get 3, ten three fifths, which is the same as 6 tenths, right? And so um, putting it into percentages there, you got 6 divided by 10 is 60. So you wouldn't reduce the 42 over 7? That, that is reducing it. Oh. Okay, so... Yeah, the, to me, the, the easiest way to reduce is to always factor. And in fact, any division in general, you can you know, make a simpler problem by factoring it. Now, factoring tends to be a little tedious at first, but you know, once you get practiced at it, you can, you can factor fairly quickly if you just go through your prime numbers from lowest to biggest. Because it's generally pretty easy to figure out, is something divisible by 2 is it so, because it's even, divisible by 3, well, you can add up the digits to see if it's divisible by 3, and if it's divisible by 5, you end in 0 and 5. Okay? All right, so let's see. Okay, so the last one here, if what is um, 36 is 30 percent of what number? Okay, so how would you calculate that? That's the way you do it. You take 36 divided by 0.3. Okay. So let's see what that works out to be. 120. Okay, so let's look now at uh, ratio problems. Okay, th those are percentage problems. You'll have a few in, the, um, in your homework. Make sure you understand those, okay, because that will be very handy, especially, you know, once you get to the point where you're studying in your uh, major, and I'm assuming that most of you are economics, biology, chemistry type um, uh, declared majors. So you'll, you'll see percentages a lot um, there. Now, ratio problems also come up um, quite frequently. Uh, these are um, uh, proportions, okay? It's, a, it's a, uh, problems that, that equate two ratios. And so by a ratio, I mean one number divided by another, like A over B equals C over D. And so um, there's a, a number of ways you can rearrange that A over B equals C over D, and it's really a matter of of laying these things out and then uh, putting it in a form that you can do your computation. So let's say we have two triangles. And a thing about um, triangles is that um, you can have similar triangles. So here, uh, and, uh, so here are two similar triangles. The characteristic of similar triangles 
is that they're in proportion to each other. Notice that the, um, uh, you know, the green triangle has a height of 4, the red triangle has a height of 8, and so the red triangle is twice the size in any dimension uh, as, the, um, as the green triangle. So you call those proportional triangles. And so you can set up all the ratios you want, and it really doesn't even have to have the same um, denominator or the same form as these. Instead of 4 over 3 equals 8 over 6, we can say 3 over 4 equals 6 over 8. And so that's the, the characteristic of, uh, of a similar triangle. You just take corresponding sides and divide them, and you'll end up with ratios that, that are constant. Okay, so here it is. So here's two, and I'm going to declare that these two triangles are are proportional to each other, or similar triangles. If I have a triangle that's 8 on the hypotenuse and 3 height, what is the height of the triangle that has a hypotenuse of 12? Okay, so think about that. Set up the ratios, figure out where your unknown is, and then rearrange it to correspond to one of these um, uh, kind of um, forms that you can more easily do a computation. What do you think? Anybody have it? Yes. 32. Now, if you look at, at kind of a reasonableness thing, if the hypotenuse is 8 and the height is smaller than the hypotenuse, you would expect that the height would be smaller than 12. So uh, maybe numerically you have it right, but maybe the decimal is wrong. Yes. I got nine halves. Nine halves. Okay, so how did you do that? Um, I set up 8 over 3 equals 12 over x, and then cross multiply. Okay. To get 8x equals 36. Um, and then you have to divide it out, so you get 36 over 8, which reduces to 9 halves. Okay, very good. Everybody follow that? Good explanation, too. Okay, so you set up your ratios, and then you multiply it out, and then solve for your unknown, and then reduce your fraction. Nine halves is a perfectly good answer here. Uh, remember, we were talking about algebraic answers, and this is the same thing as four and a half, but uh, since we're going to likely use these numbers again in some algebraic computation, leave it as nine halves. You can, if it's the final answer, put it in uh, four and a half, but, but for me, so long as it's reduced from 36 eighths to nine halves, that's a perfectly good answer. Okay, so I think I did almost exactly the same. Notice I, I used these Instead of 8 over 3 equals 12 over x, I had x over 12 equals 3 over 8. It's exactly the same thing. And, and the process was exactly the same thing to find out um, what the answer was. Okay, so here's another different kind of proportion problem. Um, one gallon of paint covers 400 square feet. I need to paint 2,800 square feet. How much paint do I need? Actually, this is a, a problem that's near and dear to my heart because my youngest daughter moved out two weeks ago, and it took my wife about 18 hours to convert it into her new sewing room, and of course, I had to paint it. So I needed to know how much paint did I need, although this isn't the size of the room we painted.
Yes. You had seven, seven gallons of paint. Seven gallons of paint. Okay. Take me through how you did that. Um, well, I, well, I, well, I simply just divided um, 2,800 by 400. Okay. And so you got, you got seven. Now, in terms of, uh, of a proportion, what, what you're really saying here is that you have one gallon does 400 square feet. And so what you want to know is how many gallons will do 2,800 um, square feet. Now, since this is a one, it doesn't really enter into the um, calculation. We can say... Um, if we cross multiply, we get 2,800 equals 400 times, we'll call um, our question mark x, and so you end up with the 2,800 divided by 400. And so it, it is one of those straightforward things that probably in a, when you're in Home Depot figuring it out, that's just what you do. You take 2,800 divided by 400. But it's nevertheless a proportion problem. So here's a slightly different perspective on it where you have, um, you know, an area per gallon is a constant. So um, I set it up very similarly. So I need seven gallons of paint. Okay, so there's a couple characteristics here that I want you to see in how I did this in writing. Okay, so what I did was I made my model or my statement of of, um, of proportionality. So I, I, I know that the area per gallons is a constant. The, um, the problem gave me the fact that one gallon covers 400 square feet. And now what I'm doing here is I'm defining what G is. G is the number of gallons needed to cover 2,800 square feet. So if you want to look at this in steps, the first step is to gather your information. Second step is to um, define your variables, and, and I'm going to really strongly recommend that you do this, is write out explicitly. If I'm going to say the sum of two numbers is 27, a good way to start that is n equals one of the numbers, you know, m equals perhaps the other number or something of that sort. So ju just don't throw in a, um, a variable. Here I told you what x was going to be, but, but when you're doing a word problem, write it down. And then you set up your, um, your equation. You solve your equation, but it's not going to be very satisfying if you tell somebody G equals 7, because that's what you really found in this, all right? You're never going to figure out a problem mathematically and come up with that as an answer. Your answer is going to be the plain English version of that. I need 7 gallons of paint. And so I'd like you to write, with word problems, I'd like you to write the answers in um, ordinary English sentences, all right? It may seem like it's a obvious step, but um, sometimes you end up with a number that doesn't really answer the question. Like if I, if I were to ask, ask you a question, you know, uh, uh, my older brother's age plus my age equals a certain number, and you may calculate it down to figure out my age, but if the question is what's my older brother's age, then actually writing it in the plain English, Joe's age is, then you know, oh, it's not Hans's age, it's Joe's age. So that natural language question should flow exactly, should come right out of the, the question of the word problem. And so forget all the calculation in between. That's the, the real life way that you do something. Somebody asks you a question and you answer the question. You don't come up to them and say x equals 7. That's kind of a robotic answer, right? Yes? Um, so I did paint over square feet instead of um, square feet over the feet, is that okay? Yeah, it's, okay. it's proportional. So, uh, so long as you keep the units right, where in, in yours was paint over square feet, so long as paint is always in the numerator and the denominator, then it all works through. <laughs> Ultimately, you'll end up with the same computation. And that's the nice thing about proportionality, is there's no um, uh, right way to do it. Now, sometimes it, it makes a little bit more sense. It flows off the tongue a little bit more naturally. Like if you're talking about mileage in a car, you usually talk miles per gallon, although it's perfectly good to say gallons per mile. And sometimes it's, it's, um, it's a little bit more enlightening to talk about it one way than the other, but sometimes it's a, just a convention. If it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. If you read the can of paint, it'll say 
um, this covers 400 square feet, so it's one over 400 is, is perhaps the, um, the, the proportion that the can says. Okay, so markup. Now, I apologize for my writing getting small here. I realized this morning when I was looking over this, I, I wrote it a little small. Now, markup is, is a concept in business where you take a, a cost and you, um, and you add something to it, and that's the price that you're going to sell. That's the only reason why you would be in business to sell something, right? Because you want to add something to your cost so you can make a profit. Now, we use the words price and cost interchangeably. Like if we're in a store together, and you, you show me something, and I say, well, how much does it cost? Or I can say, what's its price? And you would understand that as the same question. But in this kind of thing, what I'm going to, um, in, in business, I, I want to make a distinction that cost is what I have to pay, and price is what I'm offering it for. Okay, so if I buy something from you, I, ha I have a cost, you sell it to me at a price. Okay, so there's the, there's the distinction. So when I'm talking about markup, the cost is what it costs me, what I have to pay, and I add a markup to it, and then I get a selling price. All right? So if you want to even always say selling price and purchase cost, you know, that's a good thing, too, um, uh, to keep track of it. But um, anyway, let's look at this. So we have... Um, a markup, and a markup is generally a markup rate times the cost. I mean, if you were to sell a lot of things, you would probably decide on a markup rate and multiply all your costs. So, for example, if you sell uh, an item at a dollar, or if uh, an item costs you a dollar and then another item costs you two dollars, you want to mark up that thing that's two dollars twice what you mark up the one dollar, right? So you decide. I'm going to have, let's say, a 25% markup rate or some, some factor like that. Okay, so cost is the base. You buy something. And then determine the price. Okay, so let's say Bill has a booth at the farmer's market. He buys bananas at 15 cents each and marks it up 20%. What does he sell it for? All right, so let's see how we do this. So the first thing is we have 15 cents equals the cost, and 20 cent or 20 percent is the markup rate, and so the markup is going to be. I think I want to stop here. The the markup is going to be the price times the markup rate, and that's what my second kind of equation is or model is here. And so my markup is going to be 20% of 15 cents, which is 3 cents. And so my price then is I will take my cost and add the 3 cents markup to it to get 18 cents. So I sell it at 18 cents a banana. Okay, so then my answer then I'll write in plain English is he sells them at 18 cents each. So you see what all the, all the terms mean. The markup is in the same units as the cost. So the markup is in, in cents in this case. It could be dollars or something of that sort. The markup rate is a percentage that you multiply the cost. OK, so here's one for you to try. Did I go too fast on that? You want to back up? OK, good. I hear this gasp when I do that, and so. The other thing is, if you ever miss something in your notes, um, you know, feel free to slow me down, you know, if I'm going too fast or whatever. Um, but if you miss one little thing or something like that, you can always check a little bit later in the day, you know, compare your notes with my notes that, um, that are posted, so you can, you can get, you know, a lost piece of information like that. But of course, when the whole class gasps, I'll slow down. Yes? So, do you multiply 15 by 0.2 or 0.15? Um, well, 15 cents, and, and so there, there's, um, it's just a convention on how you, you, you write something. So if you have, um, you see it in a store, and it may be marked like this or like this. This is 15 cents, and this is also 15 cents. 
what cracks me up is when a store does this, because that's meaningless, okay? That doesn't have any meaning. So I prefer working in integers, so I'll put the cent sign behind it, and that's what I did there. So yeah, you could still do it this way and then multiply it by 0 0.02, and then you get, in consistent um, notation, you get that. Yes? Um, so the two formulas that you have, um, so when you have a word problem, you use the selling price one is asking you for the selling price, and then the markup formula when they're asking you for the markup? Or do you use both always? Well. You can go one way or the other, you know, like if you're given um, a, a selling price and somebody says that was marked up 20, 20 cents, then you can calculate what the cost is. Now, we're going to also talk about something called margin, okay? And margin is when you use the selling price as the base. But on this one, you use the cost as the base because the, the markup implies you're taking a cost and, and bringing it up to something. I, I think what you're getting at is if you know the selling price, what is the... Um, what is the markup? That's a question. It's also another question asked, what's the margin? And I'll explain margin and markup in, in a slide or two, okay? But it's a good thought. Okay, can I go on? All right, so here's one for you. So a shoe, shoe store marks up shoes 50%. It buys a certain um, shoe at $65 per pair. What is the store's price? Okay, so imagine you're an employee of this store. Your, your boss gives you a box of shoes and says, I paid $65 for this. I want you to mark it up 50%. How are you going to price that, um, that shoe? What do you think? Did you get it? I think so. You think so? How did you do? What did you do? Um, I, what I did personally was I said, well, what's 50% of? Because 65 is not a very easy, 50% is really easy to work with, and mm -hmm. 65 really isn't the easiest because it'll come out to an odd number if you just divide it by 2. So I went down to 60, okay, what's half of 60, 30, right, what's half of 5, 250, 30 plus. 250 is 32, add 65 to that, so I got 97. Great, okay. So you figured out, um, you took 65 times 50%, or one half of that, and your computation method is great, okay? You take half of 60, which is 30, half of 5 is 250, and so you got um, 3250, and then you added 65 to 3250, and you got 9750, okay? That, that's... That's right. And so, um, so that's good. Okay, so if I write out all the words, here's the model. And then I make my definitions. P is the price. 65 is the cost. 0.5 is the markup rate. The markup is 0.5 times 65. The markup is 32.50. The price is the cost plus markup, so the price is 97.50. So the store's price is 97.50. Okay, now I did a lot of writing there, 
and um, you know certainly much more than I did here because we were talking about it and you know I was using words around what I was writing but I would really strongly recommend you get in the habit of, of doing this. Notice I've written my model out, I've defined what my variable is, I wrote down the information that I knew, I, I started calculating all these boxes up here, I figured the markup was 0.5 times 65, that's the markup rate times the cost, and then the price is the cost plus the markup, and so I get the price, and then I answered the question in, in a natural language sentence. Okay? So those, those five steps. Now, get in the habit of doing this, because I guess I don't ever just want to have you prepare for the test. You know, I want you ultimately to learn this. But from the first practical standpoint is you've got to score enough on the tests. Let's say you mess up, and you don't, add, or if you don't, uh, multiply 0. 0.5 times 65 right. Maybe instead of 3250 you get 3350 or something like that. If you just write the answer, the answer's wrong and, and that's all you get is a wrong answer. But if you've written all this down, okay, everything here, everything is correct and if you miss a little computation on the inside, that's going to be an easy thing to find because you can see what you do. And so if I made that mistake, let's say instead of 3250, I get 3350, out of maybe a six-point problem, you'd lose one point. Okay? If all you wrote down was 9750, or instead of if you made the computation mistake, you wrote 9850, that was wrong, you'd miss all six points. Okay? So the more you write, the more you'll get credit for it. And uh, my, my rationale there is that you seldom just do a calculation once and move on. You know, you, you, you check your calculations, people challenge it, you know, you, you go through and you, you'll do um, this kind of problem more than once and, and all that, and you'll start to find your answers pretty easily if you document everything that you've done. So it's a really good habit to get into from a, from a scientific or business standpoint to write out the whole method that you did it, okay? And then when you get promoted and the next person comes in, they see your work, they'll know how to do it and they'll appreciate that, that there is some um, uh, documentation there. Okay, so let's look at margin now. We, we had a question earlier about uh, markup and margin. Okay, so we take the margin, and the margin and markup dollar-wise are the same thing, but the margin is calculated using the price as a base, not the cost. And so the margin rate is different than the markup rate. Okay, so let's say an accountant tells a business um, owner his month's sales were $50,000 and he had a 20% margin. What was his cost? And this is the way the question comes up. You know, generally when you're pricing something, what you know is the cost, and so you use the cost as a basis to get to a price. But if you know how much money you've taken in, and an accountant will tell you how much money is left over, you can figure out what your costs are. Okay, so your revenue is what you actually get because of your price. And so the way we would calculate this then is if C is the cost, point two is the margin rate, 50000 is the sales, which we can consider the price. And so we do our calculations. And after this stops scrolling, I'll, I'll walk, walk you through it step by step. So we've defined the C as the cost. Point 0.2 is the margin rate. And $50,000 was the price. That's what you got, right? And so if M is the margin, we go up to this model and we say, okay, the price times the margin rate, which is 20%, equals the margin. And so we've calculated that the margin is $10,000, because that's 0 0.2 times, times uh, 50,000. And so then we stick that back in our equation. 50,000 equals our cost plus our margin. And so 40,000 <laughs> is our cost, and so his cost was $40,000. Yes? Can you explain what a margin is? Yeah. I have a graph, this next slide, that'll, that'll help you with that. 
Okay, so here's the difference. Yeah. Finish copying that? Yeah. Okay. See, if none of you were here, I can complete this lecture in about five minutes. And that wouldn't help either of us. Okay, how are we doing with that? Good? Okay. So, markup versus margin. So the markup is how much do you add to the cost? to get to a price. The margin is how much did you exceed your costs with a, with a certain price. I think what I want to do is go through the whole page. Okay, to get to the um, so the markup now, you use the cost as a base because really you don't know the price. What you, what you want to do with a markup is you want to determine the price. What you want to do with a margin is you want to figure out, um, starting from your price, what are your costs. And so when you walk into a store and you see prices and everything, you wonder how much is the owner making off of this? That's a question where you're asking how much margin is there. And so if our cost is 80 and the price is 100, the markup and the margin are the same, right? It's, it's 20. But just like at the very beginning when we use as um, uh, the numbers with a different base, here we have a margin of 20% because we use the price as the base. The markup, we use the cost as the base, and so we get to... 25%. So even though dollar-wise it's $20, the margin and the markup, the markup rate is 25% and the margin rate is Yes. So 
profit? Yeah, you can look at, um, well, the $20 is your profit. Okay, the 20% is your profit based on your price. Now, usually when you're talking about um, uh, margin and cost, you're not looking at things that are, are what's called general business burdens or fixed costs. Like, for example, uh, when we were trying to figure out the price of those shoes, we didn't figure out, okay, what part of the rent has to go in there. So the way you practically run a business is that you figure out what kind of a markup do I need to cover all my other costs that aren't proportional to it. And so your margin then becomes your, your gross profit, not your net profit. And so your net profit is where you take out all the other expenses that you can't directly assign to, a, uh, to an item, like your rent. OK, can I go on? OK. Need a little bit more? Everybody else okay? All right. So here's one for you to try. So a, a store sells a watch for $400. It costs the store $240. What is the margin rate and the markup rate? Okay, so here I'm asking for both. Okay, so we have the price and we have the cost. And so what would be the margin rate and what is the markup rate from that? Yes. Yes. If I set it up the same way you did for the, like how you were explaining it before, would it work? Would it work the same way? Exactly. Yeah. So, like what did, what did you do then? Um, I like I did the uh, the price was four hundred, so that's at the top, and then um, I had the little rectangle. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's about 240. Yeah, that's a, that's a very um, good way to do things. You know, always you know make a graphic if if visual is is the way you like to work. So you made this, and you had this thing at 400, and this one at uh, 240, and you made the difference here is 160. So this is both the markup 
and the margin. But that doesn't answer the question. The question is, what's the margin rate and the markup rate? So what would that be then? That's uh, 160 over 400 for the margin. And that equals uh, 40%. And then for the markup, it's uh, 160 over 240. Okay, everybody agree with that? So certainly in, in your calculations, if, if you're trying to understand what's going on in a problem, drawing a diagram is really helpful. And if this is the model that, that you remember, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's actually a great way to lay out a problem because anybody who comes back visually, they'll see exactly what you've done. You know, it, it, your eye can, can look at a picture and... and and get so much more out of it than reading a sentence or something like that. Yes? Um, so, like, if you were to do this kind of formula style, so you do the difference, so your profit divided by what you sold it for. Mm-hmm. Or, and that's for the markup. Mm-hmm. No, for what you sold it for, if the ratio between the uh, margin and what you sold it for is now going to be the margin. Right? It's oh. from... The ratio of these two is the margin. The ratio of these two is the markup. Okay. And just, you know, you think of it this way, is that you're going up, right? So mark up is, is a good way to perhaps distinguish between those two words. They sound like, the, you know, they could be the same meaning. So we have to look at, you know, kind of fine differences in, in, in the meaning. And so your mark up is what, what makes you go from the cost to the price. All right, so I think I did it just about the same way. Um, so the margin and markup are the same, $160, and the margin rate is 160 divided by 400, which is 40%. And then the markup rate is 160 over 240. And so if I factor that out, and then do all my canceling, I get two-thirds, which is 66.7%. 67% is good. Okay, the margin rate is 40%, and the markup rate is 66.7%. All right? Everybody there? Okay, so let's look at discount now. I mean, that's, that's what we're normally faced with when we go into a store. You know, we, mo most of us don't operate a store. I mean, perhaps everybody in their life will at one time work for a store or some type of selling operation. But um, what we mo most often do is um, look at, um, at discount. And before I completely lay out that problem, let's look at what the discount, how that's laid out. So if we have a list price, so that's the normal price, minus the discount is going to be the discounted price. And so the discount is the discount rate times the list price. So when you say this is, um, we're going to discount things by 25%, if your price is $100, the discount itself is going to be $25, and then we take the list price minus the discount, which is 100 minus 25, your new price then is $75. Okay, I think discount is probably a little bit more intuitive because you deal with it a little bit more. Okay, so Sue bought a book for $12 off a table that said 25% off. What was the original price? Okay, so see if you can use that model and, and figure out what the original price was. This one might be a little bit harder. It's twelve dollars. Twelve hundred dollars is a very expensive book. Although there are books, I suppose, that expensive. Now here's a case where you probably want to set up some equations using a variable. And so 
you know, define a variable and then put it into those uh, to, into that model on the top and see if you can get an equation that you can solve, I guess, is, is, would be the strategy. It's not one that you can easily do in your head. Okay, anybody do this? Well, I know you're all doing it. Anybody do it in a way that you want to share? What do you think? Shall I just walk you through the way I did it and then compare it to the way you've done it? What, what, what um, was the original price, just to see if you got the right number? 16. Okay, so there's several ways to get to that, but let me show you the way I got to it. Okay, so I define my variable. P is the list price, and 0.25P is the discount. That's using this second equation here. So I have my list price is P, discount is 0.25, and my discount then is... Um, 0.25p, and so I know that p minus 0.025p equals my discounted price, and so I can put this into my equation like this, since I know what my discounted price is, so p minus 0.25p equals 12, and then I can factor out the p, and make it P times 1 minus 0.25 and get 0.75P equals 12. And then, of course, P equals 12 divided by 0.75. Oops. Okay. So here I've just done the whole calculation. Let me stop it here. Um, everybody understand how I got to here? Yes. Um, so how do you know which formula of the two you use based, um, based on what you know, okay? And so when you start saying, you start laying this out, the, you want to know what the original price is. You don't know what that is. So that's a good candidate for a variable, right? So we call that P. Now we know the discount, and so we know that it, the discount, is, discount rate is 0.25. And since we have two of these items now, we have list price defined as P and the discounted rate as 0.25, we can see what the discount is, and we knew, uh, uh, but we don't know what the discount is. There's nothing we can do this, th with this top formula based on our definitions yet. So you, you formulate the um, equations based on what you're having by your definitions. Okay, so you see what, what you can fit in. Yes? Okay, so when I have P 
equals 0.25p equals 12. Well, oh, p minus, I'm sorry, that's not p equals. What I'm going to do is factor out the p. Okay, so if I factor out a p, I have 1, and then I factor out the p here, and I have 0.25. And so now it's 1 minus 0.25, p times 0.75 equals 12, like that. Okay? Yeah. Why? Because I factored out the P from here. And then what was the next piece? And so then 1 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75. Oh, so right, yeah. So an alternate way to look at this is put a 1 in front of here, and then you can see when you factor out the P, then you get that. Okay? Everybody good? All right, so then on the last page here, and um, this is really the last slide, and it's a little small, I know. But um, basically, I took 12 divided by 0.75, and so I made that 12 divided by 3 quarters, and I take the reciprocal of that to be 4 thirds, cancel out my 3s, and I get 16. And so the, the original price of the book was $16. Yes? The discount rate is a percent, and the discount is in dollars. Okay, so... Oh, so like the discount is $4, but the rate is 20 25%. Okay. Right. So the rate stays constant for all the products. The dollar amount depends on the, on the original price. Okay, so we'll end here.